Time now for the news review of this bulletin. Hello and welcome to the News Review. The Syrian Foreign Minister says U.S. sanctions on Damascus show that Washington is opposed to the Arab nation's sovereignty. I think that it would be very ridiculous or any person would be naive if they thought that the, Uni the U.S., uh, the United States, cares about the Syrian people and ameliorating their life and their future. They are enforcing these sanctions not for that sake. They are enforcing sanctions because they not, uh, don't want a free and sovereign uh, Syrian decision. Well, Adam Ayala was speaking in a press conference with the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and the Deputy Prime Minister Udi Borisov in Damascus. Borisov, for his part, slammed as a destructive move new U.S. sanctions imposed on Syria under the so-called Caesar Act in June. He said that Moscow is trying to help Damascus break through what he called an economic blockade created by new U.S. sanctions. Lavrov also said that Syria needs international help to rebuild its economy. Earlier, Lavrov met with the President Bashar al-Assad, and during that meeting, Assad said that Syria wants to expand business ties with Russia to help it cope with new U.S. sanctions on the country's economy. The sanctions penalize foreign firms dealing with Syrian government entities. Mohamed Ali is a correspondent joining us from Syria's capital, Damascus, and James Jatras is a former U.S. Senate foreign policy analyst joining us from Washington, D.C. Okay, first to you, Mohamed Ali. What uh, did you see as being any breakthroughs, if you notice, from this uh, Russian, which I noticed was a Russian entourage, and it, it was filled with all different types of uh, Russian uh, delegates, of, of, uh, I'm guessing from different industries, perhaps. Uh, any, any breakthroughs that you noticed in this? Well, the title of uh, this uh, visit by this uh, Russian delegation was definitely economic cooperation between Syria uh, and Russia. Now, we know that uh, according to uh, the Russian Deputy uh, Prime Minister Yuri Borisov in his press conference today, he said that there were about 40 new uh, economic projects signed with the Syrian uh, side with regards uh, in, uh, in the field of uh, reconstruction of the uh, uh, infrastructure of the power sector in Syria and also extracting oil from the sea. So uh, th th this is definitely definitely uh, an economic visit, let's say, over here. Of course, the Syrian president met with this uh, delegation, which also included uh, Syria, uh, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. They discussed the already, uh, the already uh, signed economic uh, agreements in 2018 and also new ones. Uh, uh, Russia, of course, expressed its support, continuous support to Syria. And President Bashar al-Assad said also that Syria continues to adopt flexibility on the political track in line with also fighting uh, uh, terrorism uh, on the other. Uh, also in this press conference, there were many important comments made by all officials, Al Mu'allim, the Syrian foreign minister, who said that the economic uh, situation in Syria will start to improve in the coming days and even uh, months. He also said that the uh, presidential elections uh, scheduled uh, next year will uh, happen whether uh, there was an agreement on a new uh, con constitution in Syria or not. He also uh, pointed out uh, that uh, the uh, future of uh, relations between Syria and Russia is promising. Lavrov also made some important comments on the situation in Idlib. He said that he discussed that with President Assad and that now the situation in Idlib is calm and that Syrians uh, should unite. He also pointed out that there, uh, no one can set a, a timetable for uh, the uh, Constitutional uh, Committee and talks on that Constitutional Committee and also that the agreements signed with regards to Idlib like separation of so-called moderate opposition groups and other uh, Takfiri terrorists is uh, being implemented even if that is happening slowly. Okay, James Latras, so we're looking at Russia, its support, economically speaking, uh, for Syria, except for the fact that you have this thing called the Caesar Act, amongst uh, perhaps other sanctions, of which uh, it appears that Russia is ready to take that risk, uh, which the U.S., I'm assuming, uh, in the Caesar Act, will be targeting uh, entities, any entity that does business with Syria. So how do you uh, analyze the support of Russia for Syria? Well, one thing we can say about Western policymakers is that they never give up. Even when they clearly see that their policy has failed and it cannot succeed, they keep, still keep trying to keep the pot boiling, to cause as much damage as possible. 
And even though it's long since clear that there's no use to it, they're not going to overthrow the Syrian government, that the remaining terrorists and other foreign forces, including, unfortunately, American forces on Syrian territory, don't present a threat to the existence of the Syrian government. But we keep trying to make a mess of the place anyway and retard any possibility of Syria's rebuilding itself. And that includes with Russian help. Let's remember that Russia is also a target of U.S. sanctions, as is Iran and Venezuela and other countries. Um, this, I think, is just purely a destructive policy being followed by the Western governments. Whether the Russians can build good economic ties with Syria through all these sanctions that are constantly being thrown, frankly, at both countries, and where, of course, their financial sector is, is one of the key vulnerabilities, uh, and which is one of the reasons why we see Russia and China and other countries moving as quickly as they can toward de-dollarization. There's a lot going on there, but I think I, on the whole, it's a positive, positive development that the Russians are willing to weigh in. Let's see how effective they can be. Okay, um, I'm curious, Muhammad Ali, if at any point in this press conference there was any questions asked about the fact that the U.S. has uh, uh, or uh, a anybody supporting the U.S., namely the Kurds, in control of the uh, oil fields and how sure. that is stopping the Syrian government from generating revenue. Was there, did anybody address that? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, the Russian side, the, the Russian officials spoke about that issue in reply to uh, a question by uh, one of the journalists. Uh, uh, Lavrov, I believe, said that uh, uh, this is a main problem, an issue that uh, the Kurds uh, take control are, 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 con are in control of most of the oil and gas fields in Syria, and uh, which lie in the uh, northeast. And this is a main problem uh, for the Syrian government to improve its economy, as this is a main sector for Syria uh, for such a purpose. So uh, yes, uh, uh, light was, was shed by the uh, Russian officials on uh, that particular issue and that it is blocking uh, the Syrian economy from improving. And this is why perhaps now Russia said that it has signed those new 40 projects which include uh, uh, searching and extracting oil from the sea uh, near the uh, uh, city of uh, Tartus over there. Uh, so you can see that the Russians are trying to uh, overcome such uh, problems and also economic sanctions and break that somehow uh, uh, Western siege on Syria by such cooperation uh, between Russia directly and Syria. Uh, finally, to you, James Jatras, you know, okay, if I'm Russia, as our correspondent there said, 40 projects, sounds good, uh, and, and I'm sure they're going to uh, probably have uh, a good take on that, but then there's this elephant in the room, that is the Israeli airstrikes. I mean, that's happening pretty much on a continuous ba basis. How could investment occur in a country when you have Israel strike a Syria as often as it does? Well, I think the short answer to that is that it will continue. Uh, I think the Syrians will persevere despite that. I, I, the, I think the airstrikes are themselves destructive and, uh, and, uh, and un unwarranted. How much they will actually retard uh, Syria's ability to rebuild, I think, remains uh, at, at issue. I, I don't know, unless the Israelis start targeting infrastructure in a major way, which I think they would be very ill-advised to do, I don't think it's really going to make that much difference if, if the Syrians otherwise are capable of moving forward. Thank you for that. We appreciate it, James Jatras, former U.S. Senate Foreign Policy Analyst. And thank you very much, Muhammad Ali, our correspondent there from Damascus. And that does it for our news review. Thanks for tuning in.